One of the common criticisms looking online for this particular lathe and its many variants is the setup with the compound slide. It's seen as a bit of a weak point um, and likely to induce vibration uh, and therefore chatter into the tool paste. In particular, the criticisms relate to the mounting mechanism. As we can see, we've got the, the tool post itself here, sat on top of the compound slide, which is loose at the moment. And the compound slide itself rests on the table um, with this clamping arrangement. Let's just remove the tool post. So I think you can see there that we have two nuts on the bolts coming up from the t-slots on the table the issue relates to the fact that we have just the two bolts and those are effectively aligned to the center pivot point of the compound slide and those three points aligned are in the same axis as the bed of the lathe which by all accounts can lead to the vibration and the chatter. So there are two suggested fixes looking online. Uh, one is to replace the bottom plate from a two bolt design to a four bolt design, therefore giving increased rigidity, but also removing that straight line um, in line with the axis of the lathe. Uh, the other option is for a fixed tool post. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna pursue the fixed tool post because um, I've got some metal with which to do that. Um, and this particular series of videos is gonna be documenting that particular build. This is the material that I'll be using to make my fixed tool stop. The longer piece will be cut to length and will sit on the carriage table. Uh, we'll have a four bolt set up so it can be securely fastened to the cross slide. And the smaller block here, the squarish block, that will sit on top. Um, and between the pair of them will make the fix steady. And here we can see a, a bit of a mock-up of how the tool post will ultimately look. Um, of course, with all the parts cut to size and finished accordingly. But that thing of a very solid base for the tool post and remove that potential for vibration and chatter coming from the compound slide. One side to the left has already been checked um, and aligned at 90 degrees to the table. So we're now going to run a cut along the face, this face here, which will square up this face to that left hand side and the far end, the face on the far end has already been squared. This should therefore give us a quite nicely rectangular block uh, of the right dimensions. I'm running the mill, it's a half inch mill, half inch end mill, which I'll be running at round about 400, uh, yeah, round about 400 RPM. First we just get a touch to find the edge. This face is the face that was pre-cut when the metal was delivered. Uh, it looks fairly clean already, but I'm going to make sure it's square now and also cut the block to the right length, 126 millimeters. So that is just touching there. I will reset to zero on the, the RO which you can't see. In fact, before I do a cut, let me just measure the length of the block. So 
127.47 millimeters. I need to take off 1.47. I'll do this in a number of relatively small cuts, probably go for around about 0.25 millimeter per cut. Bit of oil. Final cut now, one, sorry, 0 0.11 millimeters to come off. So a nice fine cut. Just clear that away, put some oil on. And we run the cut by. Given I was aiming for 126 millimeters, I think that's pretty damn good. This is the base block now, just laying on the cross slide table, a carriage table, where it will eventually be positioned. What I've done so far is I've squared off both those end faces. I'm going to leave both the sides as it came, so I'm not going to machine those. All I'll do is is dress all the edges with the file to make sure there's no sharp burrs. Yeah, but the block is now cut to size. See if I can get that in position, roughly. So it's gonna sit somewhere here. So we'll be drilling four bolt holes, one in each corner effectively. So they're passed down through the block to be secured on T-nuts in the table there, in the slots in the table. So I'm not going to mark up the block to do that. I'm actually going to put it straight in the milling machine, find one of the edges or find two of the edges, and then use the DRO to center drill and then drill through each of those bolt holes. They'll all be eight mil bolts. Uh, I'm not sure yet whether I'll counterbore them or whether I'll countersink them. Depends on what I've got available in terms of bolts. <laughs> 